Hello everybody, and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe to the channel for regular content on ancient architecture, as well as all of the latest news from the world of archaeology. As many of you are aware by now, in the past couple of weeks there's been a lot of talk about a lost underground city, the mythical Lost Halls of Amenti, and the Lost Hall of Records. And that's because a team of researchers claim to have found man-made structures below the Giza Plateau, beneath the Pyramid of Khafre, and going down for some two kilometres. The claims of a lost city and halls of Amenti don't even come from the press, but from the team of researchers themselves, on their official Facebook page, their video press release, and also on individual Facebook posts. I discussed the entire CAFRE SAR research project in my last video, expressing my concerns and asking what I consider to be important questions, and I also gave a number of reasons why I don't believe the claims. With full transparency regarding the scientific method, and if it can be independently verified, I can of course accept that a scientist has developed a method to see beneath the bedrock using SAR data. But still, I am far, far, far away from accepting there are absolutely enormous man-made structures going down for two kilometres. To use the words of the research team on their official Facebook page, they say the following, quote, The satellites have detected anomalous structures beneath the Pyramid of Khafre. These are eight vertical shafts, descending to a depth of approximately 648 metres. End quote. The next post says, quote, The satellites used have detected anomalous structures beneath the pyramid of Khafre. Cubic formations approximately 80 metres per side are located deep beneath the pyramid. The vertical shafts extend into these cubic chambers, pass through them, and continue descending to a depth of around 1.2 kilometres. End quote. And then, their next post contains a very inaccurate diagram. It's also in their video press conference. It's like they made this diagram without using their own published measurements. The Khafre Pyramid, when complete, would have been around 143.5 metres tall, but they say the eight vertical shafts or cylinders descend to a depth of 648 metres. According to the conference press release, they say the shafts or cylinders merge into the 80 metre square cubic chambers, and then they say the shafts continue on for another 1.2 kilometres. Yes, another 1,200 metres. So, this is how they portray their discovery. But based on their own measurements, it should look like this. I don't know how they managed to get their own diagram wrong when they themselves have published the measurements. And to be honest, they should have just said they've discovered unusual or anomalous features and not offered any kind of interpretation. The interpretation and calling it a lost city instantly sets off alarm bells. And not just for the interpretation, but also the entire project. In their Facebook post from March 22nd, they said, quote, Press release number one, Giza plan, discover a city under the pyramids, end quote. And then another post from the same day says, quote, Official press release, Giza plateau, discovery of a huge city under the pyramids, end quote. So this should and does instantly set off alarm bells they've managed to get a lost city from this fuzzy data. For those interested in something new, a different explanation for the team's anomalous results, check out the new video from Wallace's Mysteries of Antiquity, link below in the description. So, what's the main reason I doubt they've discovered a lost city going down some two kilometres? And even if it's not a lost city, what's the main reason I doubt they've discovered, well, any kind of man-made features going down for two kilometres? Topographically speaking, the base of the Khafre Pyramid sits at around 70 metres above sea level on the Giza Plateau. For comparison, the Great Sphinx sits at around 20 metres above sea level. Today, 
the water table, which is the height of the groundwater in the bedrock, is at around 15 metres above sea level, as measured at the Great Sphinx. This means there is just 5 metres of dry bedrock below the famous monument, and it was likely a lot less in history when Egypt was wetter. Below the water table we find porous and permeable limestone bedrock, so its pores, cracks, caves and fissures are saturated, meaning the vast majority of these alleged man-made structures are actually underwater. And not just in the modern era. Egypt was even wetter in dynastic history, even wetter in pre-dynastic history, and much wetter throughout the African humid period. Giza is right next to the Nile River. A branch of the Nile used to literally sit at the eastern margins of the Giza Plateau. This is one of the world's biggest rivers, and so if you're looking for a lost underground city in northern Egypt, I would suggest you head out into the desert, and not investigate porous bedrock right next to a major river. The water table typically slopes towards a river, which acts to drain the groundwater away and release the pressure in the aquifer. All in all, Giza is not a great place to build a subterranean city, because you only really have a small window of dry bedrock to work in. You don't build a city or any kind of elaborate structures underwater. Well, not without a very, very, very good reason. Firstly, how do you do it? And secondly, why do you do it? And then there's the question of, if they did it, where is all of the excavated rock? And we're talking about a lot of rock. The Osiris shaft is a multi-leveled underground structure, and it's found halfway along the Khafre Causeway. It descends to a depth of around 30 metres, and as Jimmy from Bright Insight pointed out on X recently, Mr. Beast recently went into the flooded lower chamber. Yes, the bottom of the Osiris shaft is underwater. It's natural groundwater. Visual ground truthing of the water table at Giza. Back in 2019, a paper was released called Shallow Geophysics Techniques to investigate the groundwater table at the Great Pyramids of Giza, Egypt a paper highlighted by Flint Dibble in his livestream analysis last week, and what I hope was read by the scientists on the CAFRE research team, but maybe not. The researchers in 2019 used 26 shallow seismic refraction and 19 ground-penetrating radar surveys on the Giza Plateau, and confirmed that the average water table elevation is around 15 metres above sea level. In the nearby suburbs of Nazlet El Saman, water table elevations reach 17 metres. They also mention that the water table in the elevated topography to the west of the Sphinx is what they call perched, and this is likely due to runoff and capillary seepage. A perched water table means higher water beneath the pyramids. The water table slopes eastwards towards the Nile. At Giza, we have a plateau made up of permeable and porous limestone, meaning water is able to get into the pores of the rock. It's also heavily fractured and faulted. When water gets into a rock, it weathers it, processes that have been going on for millions and millions of years. This has led to natural cavities and cave systems being created as seen at the Tomb of the Birds, after being entered into most famously by researcher Andrew Collins. But how deep is the limestone at Giza? What we know of the Giza Plateau is that it's made up of a number of units of rock from what they call the Mokotam Formation, limestone beds deposited in the Eocene, sometime between 38 and 48 million years ago. Directly below the Khafre Pyramid, the first 100 metres or so is certainly made up of this huge limestone formation, and it could well go a lot deeper. We just don't know how deep it goes, because, as far as I'm aware, no specific borehole study has been conducted at Giza. Using the geophysical data, geologists modelled the perched water table to the west of the Sphinx 
including the pyramids of Khafre and Menkore. At the pyramid of Khafre, the water table is between 30 and 40 meters above sea level. What this means is that below the pyramid, we have dry limestone for around 30 to 40 meters only. The rest of the Mokotam limestone is below the water table, meaning all the pores, voids, faults, fissures, and caves are saturated. As stated, we don't know the specific underlying geology of Giza beneath the Mokotam formation, but from various studies, we do know the general sequence of rocks in Egypt. In general terms, the Mokotam formation is made up of limestone beds and is around 133 meters in thickness. Below this is the Minia formation, shallow marine sedimentary rocks with beds of limestone, claystone and conglomerate rock. This layer is 35 meters thick or more. Below this is the Thebes formation, again sedimentary rock, mainly carbonate rocks like limestone, and this is around 290 meters in thickness. Below this is 60 meters of Esna shale, and then we reach the Cretaceous chalk. So, the first 518 meters of these so-called artificial structures, if they do really exist, would be cut through many different types of sedimentary rock, many of which would be relatively soft, porous and permeable, as well as being faulted and fractured. And then we reach the chalk, and we have no idea what condition this is in. To excavate so deep in the Giza bedrock, people would have needed a very sound understanding of geology and engineering, and how to create effective drainage systems for the groundwater. You would need to implement sophisticated water management and sealing techniques, because you need to control and divert the water flow. In modern day mining operations below the water table, pumps and sumps are required. Specific channeling and piping is often needed, and grouting and advanced sealing techniques are also implemented. Sometimes groundwater flow paths can be intercepted and diverted. The fact is, mining into the bedrock below the water table is a difficult job to manage, even in the modern era. Therefore, if this lost city really does exist, which I seriously doubt, Whoever created it would have needed advanced technology to pump out the water, and genius levels of engineering prowess to seal the structures and keep everything dry, and then they would need monitoring all year round. Remember, we're talking about proposed man-made subterranean structures going down for around 2 kilometers. That's more than 4 Empire State buildings stacked on top of each other. My opinion and yes, it's just my opinion, is simply that all of this is just too unrealistic. There are too many giant leaps required to make it feasible. It really is science fiction. But if we want to really look for a lost city below Giza, this simple cross-section pretty much tells us the area we need to look in. Anything below is just unrealistic in my opinion. I don't believe there is any kind of lost city below Giza, and I also don't believe in a hall of records as well, and it's really just because of the location of Giza. Right next to the River Nile, with its annual inundation, its high water level in ancient and prehistoric times, and the relatively high water table in the bedrock as well. The Giza necropolis is of course filled with man-made tombs with shafts, corridors and chambers, and these all vary in size and shape, and many of them are cut into the bedrock. And this is exactly what you'd expect with a necropolis. I wouldn't even be that surprised if there were other undiscovered, maybe underground Osiris-related ritual structures built into this dry zone of the limestone bedrock. We can all speculate, but nobody knows for sure if these structures exist, because specific exploration has not taken place. But we do know that a network of natural tunnels does exist. Andrew Collins rediscovered them, Zahi Hawass then went into them, 
and most recently they're investigated by Jeffrey Drum, who runs the channel The Land of Kim. And I'm not saying that this is insignificant. For all we know, these caves could have well played a part in the history of Giza, in dynastic, pre-dynastic and prehistoric eras of history. Cave systems across the world have always acted as shelters, for humans and animals. They can also be sacred to some cultures, and also used in rituals, and they can often be the source of magnificent archaeological discoveries. So I do think that these caves below Giza should be at some point fully investigated. For all we know, a chamber could well have been cut out at the end of a natural tunnel system, yes within this dry zone, and this could well be the perfect hiding place for all the missing mummies of Old Kingdom Egypt, a way to ensure the kings were buried beneath the pyramids, but through a back door that nobody would ever think to investigate. In my opinion, that is an alternative idea worth thinking about. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.